what I'm going to show here is just a few tips uh, that helped me kind of uh, clean things up. Uh, and uh, hopefully, uh, hopefully that makes sense for you guys as well. So, so one of the things that, uh, the, so here's two scenarios, like, uh, and you probably, if you built any app, you, you, uh, you know, you had to kind of do uh, probably some filtering uh, operations. Here's an, a simple case of a gallery control um, uh, where I'm actually filtering by some properties like my photos, all photos, public, and maybe some search term. Uh, this is another example where I have different cards item with like different actions, uh, read more, approve, deny. Uh, so every card would have some conditions that that will make it that uh, the render, you know, we're gonna have different actions. So an action can be uh, going to another screen, launching a different browser. Uh, approving or denying through an API call or, you know, a connector call. Uh, so uh, those are two examples I'm, I'm going to show, but typically whenever I had to uh, build apps where I had to do some sort of uh, filtering operations like this, uh, my code grew a lot more complex. Uh, so, and this is just like three filtering operations. Uh, I've had like a project uh, or customers building project where they had 50, 60, uh, you know, uh, parameters that control the sorting, filtering of a gallery, uh, and uh, and then uh, and then how to kind of tackle that uh, was the question. So, uh, so here's an example of where and how Power Apps expect you really to build things, right? Like we have, uh, uh, we have uh, here an example of uh, that read those buttons that I was showing in these cards. And you can imagine that the, uh, you know, uh, the uh, action uh, or what to do uh, depends on what data we get back as part of that collection that we're li linking to this feed. So the feed itself has the title, the image, you know, but it also has a collection of actions that you act on. Uh, that, that kind of hints of what to do when a user does something. Uh, here is an example of how you would implement that. Uh, so you will have this notion of, uh, you know, the name uh, of the action, uh, like the argument, uh, you know, uh, so the uh, the name can be also deep link if you're going to go to a different page, like launching a browser. Uh, the name can be API if you know you're going to be doing some sort of processing of, a, of an action. So the argument gives you extra details to, to tell you what to do with, with, the, with the action. Here it tells you where to navigate. Uh, so but you can see easily here that the more actions you have, the more things you're gonna, you're gonna go into this pattern of if, uh, if, if uh, you know, uh, and you can keep going uh, uh, easily as, as you add more, more things to your, uh, more conditions. So uh, an alternative to doing this is, uh, is realizing that you could, uh, first of all, switch ends up, if it's appropriate, clean things up drastically because you don't have to keep repeating if you could just state your condition. Uh, but there is also this idea of uh, creating uh, collections uh, in order for you to do a lookup. Uh, in this case, I know that uh, for when the case of navigate, uh, there is few, few cases uh, that I'm gonna go, a uh, uh, few screens I'm gonna need to go to. It's either going to be the detail screen, the time away screen, X number of screens that I might have to go to. Uh, so what I do is I create a collection of screens uh, and then I, I simply go and, and reference the screens uh, in this manner. So a lookup basically here is saving me from the fact that I, from the, you know, from the need of having to do a bunch of if statements. Uh, just to clarify more, so this is kind of like what that screen collection would look like. Uh, and again, rather than do an if else uh, on each one of the names, I do simply a lookup on that. Uh, same thing with color collections, for example, rather than keep doing if my button style or my button color is going to be of, you know, uh, this type uh, button style, uh, you know, let's pick this color. Uh, I can just put everything in a collection and then rather than do an if statement, I, I go and, and define uh, and get the data, like the data will drive basically what style I need. I only need to kind of do a lookup. Uh, 
in order for me to uh, to get to the right screen. So anyway, look up and defining collection are a great way to reduce that if as statement, uh, especially if your key is, is an actual name, string name. Uh, real quick again, uh, filtering, we talked about this. This can easily be complex, uh, uh, get complex really quick. So here is an, a situation where I'm doing a search and filtering operation. And you can see that it's almost already impossible to kind of go and refactor this. If you add a new filter operation or want to change something, uh, you're going to left with a bunch of uh, headache to just figure out what the right thing to do here. Uh, and then it, it's uh, Im impossible to maintain in the long run anyway. So another alternative to that is is really uh, uh, using uh, each control here as its own uh, kind of uh, making every control responsible for doing their own filtering. So this particular gallery here filters, uh, you know, the filtered photo here by public or not. The public and pre private, you know, drop down will do the filtering on this collection. And the same thing with the, the church text. So just to show here the equivalent. So items collection here is 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 what we just were showing. Uh, you can see here that uh, the alternative here is a quick, very easy to understand uh, formula where if you want to add more layers, it's just going to be one more line for that particular filter operation or filter parameter. In order to orchestrate this, you can just simply um, uh, on the on change event, uh, you know, have the actual proper filtering happen. So in that way, you kind of hide uh, a bit more of that complexity here. So again, I'm doing filtering, whether it's all public, I'm getting, uh, it's, if it's my photos, all the photos I'm filtering, if it's the my photos, it's gonna be the current user. Otherwise, uh, I'm gonna take all of the photos into this collection. And all I left to do is just do an interaction, an intersection uh, between this uh, collection that I, uh, I created. Uh, again, this works in a smaller setting, smaller subset of data, uh, because you do have to create additional collections. But the the side net effect is that you it's much easier to handle in terms of uh, style. Uh, it's a little bit cleaner. Okay, real quick, I'm going to add a few more things so we give enough time for the rest. Uh, we talked slightly about it. I see this often. People you know, the first and filter, uh, which basically is always almost always just a lookup. Uh, so that should be something like this lookup. Uh, uh, I don't know why this pattern happened to appear out there, but I see this often and, and usually that means you could just collapse it into look lookups. That's why you avoid doing a filter operation, get all of the items, then take the first item and you kind of let the server give you the exact item you want. The other thing I see often is that that same uh, for different values, you, you have the same API call. Again, you can just cache that and then and then basically take that same object and then take the properties out of that. So the next thing I usually do is uh, uh, is uh, basically around just kind of uh, giving uh, doing some relative position items. So uh, I define my margins or top item. This makes the design review a lot easier if you need to get more breathing room for your paddings or margins. You could just simply change it around here in your, uh, in your initial variable settings, and then everything will reflect right away because everything is tied to those, uh, to those variables. Uh, may, moving those items becomes easy because they are all positioned relative to each other. So this this item here is, uh, or this item here is the Y position is relative to the Y position of the button, of the control on top of it, plus the height of it, plus the additional margins uh, that that com that might be uh, used for this uh, control. Uh, we talked about formula optimization. This is an example where if you do a filter, uh, again, you're doing a profile uh, API call, you should just put that in an object and then have that being referenced in that filter operation. 
The uh, hard-coded strings, uh, there is patterns for that. There's a blog post on that as well. But uh, this is just so that, you, you know, there is a lot of times you need to kind of generate some HTML, some templates. Uh, you could, uh, you know, you could do this in, in Flow, but you could also, if you want to do some, some substitution within Power Apps, you could use a combination of, a, of an embedded Excel sheet uh, plus uh, kind of a pattern here. You can see that, uh, you know, in my uh, in my template, I have the same this uh, curly bracket with the zero and, and one. This is where my substitution of variable will happen. So using this concept, you could actually create a template that is much more friendly to use and edit. Uh, and then and then bring it in and then use uh, you know few formulas here to go and substitute uh, the uh, the those variable uh, markers here with the proper values. Uh, so I typically uh, send my last. Uh, so when I navigate in between screen, I don't use gallery dot selected in the, my next screen. I typically use the last item here of the navigate to uh, to bring in the selected item. Uh, this makes it easy uh, to do things like a deep link. Uh, so if we take a dependency on gallery that's selected in that detail screen, uh, we lose the ability to do uh, a navigate uh, a deep link straight from on start. Uh, to that particular detail screen with a with a with an item. Uh, this pattern here basically makes it that you just have to set this variable selected item, whether you do it on start or whether you do it as you're navigating between the home screen and that uh, final screen. Uh, but basically, this is uh, this is a way to kind of uh, avoid having to do some uh, you know some more you know additional kind of. Uh, basically, you are decoupling the home screen and detail screen so that they don't rely on that control, which is the gallery, uh, which is typically what uh, what what you know what users uh, or app makers typically do. So, if you're going to a detail screen here from a navigate, uh, so if I do on item on select here, I insert action navigate. So relying on that last item here will will uh, let's do it selected item. So rather than doing gallery uh, or photo gallery dot selected photo image, uh, I would do. Let me go back. Make sure I did it right. Item dot. Uh, oh, I don't have my photo. So here again, I, I went. This is coupling photo gallery, so this is a this screen becomes kind of coupled to this one because it it has to know about the gallery control. Uh, in, instead of doing, uh, if we do selected concept here again, is just the fact that uh, I now that I have this decoupled with the with the screen. So the only difference is that again uh, I am setting that as a part of my navigate. Now if I had a requirement where uh, I had to do something like this at uh, runtime at starting of the time, so that some if someone supplied the item ID, I can go straight to the navigate detail screen. If I had relied on gallery, I can't really do this pattern of uh, of looking up directly the photo and then move on directly to the detail screen. So anyway, so that's kind of why I typically pick this option uh, rather than actually relying on gallery dot selected whenever I can. Uh, so edit and you are actually the same thing in a way. Uh, I, I set a variable customer issue here. Uh, this is in order to avoid if else statements on on this kind of uh, situation when we have an edit and you. Uh, if it's an edit, I'll just pass in the current item. If it's new, I just do default. Uh, and then when it's patching time, you can see here, uh, let me zoom in. When it's patching time, I, I can always use that same object customer issue, which will either means that it's a default or it's going to be an actual item I want to edit. So and again, the goal is, is just to kind of, ref, you know, avoid uh, complicated code that that's hard to read, like if and else and all that stuff. Uh, 
and then uh, this is another thing about error handling. Uh, so this is in the update context. There is this uh, thing that you guys should probably use the formula error level management, which allow you to kind of, uh, if you turn it on, you will start seeing uh, kind of uh, errors. If a patch, for example, server side didn't make it, uh, when you get the result, you have an opportunity here to act on it. Uh, so it's good to kind of implement this pattern. 